How's it going? I'm Keith Cooper, a writer, producer of Anything for Jackson, and I'm going to be on The Void. Hey guys, welcome to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. My name is Alex, and today we have a very special guest. We have Keith Cooper, writer of Anything for Jackson with us today to talk a little bit about his movie, his life, and hopefully maybe some of the future stuff. We'll see. But uh, Keith, welcome. Thank you so much for taking your time out today to sit down with all of us. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. This is so cool. Thanks for having me on. And, you know, as a screenwriter, most, most, most people don't care. <laughs> you do the director, the actor. So, hey man, you're the one that created. Yeah, one, it doesn't seem to matter. They just they, they want they want the pretty people. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you, and I respect uh, your you. craft, sir. So, <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, we. Uh, I actually, you know, I mean, before we get into some of the anything for Jackson stuff, because I, you know, obviously, I'm a big fan of the movie. Obviously. And uh, there's a lot of like history to you that I want to get to to kind of see sure. how you arrived at that at that movie particularly. So um, one, I was looking through your work and I saw that you're a visual effects artist. So you actually started out with that, I'm assuming, and then kind of like you worked on some pretty big names, like uh, just to throw some uh, throw some uh, cloud around here. He's got the Fountain, Superman, Silent Hill, Fantastic Four across the universe all like very incredible visual effects uh film so can you tell us a little bit about that yeah 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 so uh much like yourself i actually started in music um so uh, i was a musician first uh same thing you know in canada you know there's not as many opportunities but we we got to play with some cool names got to open it up for some um some you know tour around a little bit and play with bands that you might know like um uh bare naked ladies Right, oh, yeah, big bang okay, yeah. intro there. So uh, that was probably our best one, um, you know. And then uh, honestly, though, just just didn't work out. Didn't you know the? Uh, I I think usually the the fans will tell you that it's not working out. So that's <laughs> uh, that's always a good sign. You reach your ceiling and you're like, all right, that's how good we are. We're that we're we're about, <laughs> we're just about under there, medium. Yeah. We're just under medium. Uh, so I said, all right, time to do something different. Um, so I'd actually gone to school for classical animation. I went to Sheridan College. I wanted to, you know, uh, draw everything. And of course, that's right when everything was switching over to digital. Um, So I had to go back to school and get my computer animation. Um, And, you know, at the time, really what I wanted to do was just make my own. I wanted to make my own animated features, just do short films. So I was really lucky I got to do a couple of those for some companies that I'd worked for. Any company that I would work for, I would basically, you know, be like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do Fantastic Four. But on the side, could I take this small team of people and do like this Pixar-like little short? And they're like, yeah, I guess, you know, if it's off time. Um, So, you know, it was cool. It was great. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, But while I was doing that, um, I had some other friends uh, that were just kind of, you know, one friend was doing stand-up comedy. Another friend was doing comedic acting. And uh, I had all this uh, equipment through work. And I just said, I was like, can I just borrow this? Am I allowed to do what I, you know, can I just sign this out? And they're like, yeah, I'll just bring it back on Monday. We don't care. So great. So we just started filming uh, some sketches. Um, That sort of, you know, we just threw them up on YouTube, just make ourselves laugh more than anything. And in the, like, literally, like you see on TV and movies, I got a a phone call, started with an email and then a phone call from um, Will Ferrell's company, Funny or Die. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, what's yeah. Will Ferrell, right? It's not you know. Don't don't paint that picture. Uh, is it? Uh, <laughs> don't get too lower? excited hey. or anything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it was so cool. They were and they were like, "Hey, you should just do your sketches for us and just you know do them exclusively." And I was like, "Cool, that sounds awesome." Yeah, why not? So we did that for a long time, uh, and then that just sort of stumbled into these other. Uh, I'm sure you've never looked it up, but I've got a whole bunch of family and uh, yes. rom com. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, it just sort of stumbled into this weird day job uh, yeah. where I'd met Justin and we both wanted to make, you know, horror movies. And we've got, you know, I mean, my my love for horror started when I was, I think, four. Great. Uh, I watched Carrie on TV when I was a little, uh, I was four years old. I saw Carrie and it changed my, it blew my mind. I was like, I didn't know movies could make me feel like that. Right. Like, I didn't know I could be scared while right. watching something. 
Well, it clearly, um, because I mean, you you guys did a really freaking great job on anything for Jackson. Like you. that is some of the more man. I just was like, oh, I was like, some of these like moments in this film. It's like what I always love about some horror movies, and a lot of people don't do in some of the writing and things is like have these little drops, these little like I call them snack treats along the way. Okay, and you got you did great at that. Like that was like it was hey. like boom, 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 boom all the way to the end and i was like that's that's how i love movies like that that's great yeah i mean okay so wait explain to me what a snack piece is then like tell me what it's like is this like a is this snack like a treat. Snack piece? like a, a it's snack like, treat yeah it's like you know there's the in-between dialogue that kind of you know moves you along it's not that it's bad or anything but there's these sort of sort of show pieces or these really juicy snack treats as i call them uh gotcha that you want to chew into that you mem that your memory keeps you know like you're like okay oh, and that's what I think uh, for me, when I see a movie that does that very well across the whole movie uh, and it's so balanced, that's like a really good movie to me. You know, there's some, oh, movies, awesome. that, some movies don't and they're still able to achieve that, which is pretty cool, too. But I like that. That's what I like. Yeah, no, that's I like that term. I hadn't I hadn't thought about that. I've You know, I've heard uh, it, it feels similar to like Quentin Tarantino's rule of five, right? Like you get sure. you get five cool things in a movie and if you do more, it's it's too much. And. You know, so I, 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 maybe it's similar to that, uh, yeah. but that's cool. I never heard that term before, but I, I like it. I like it. Make sure you get on a t-shirt and patent it, it and all You know all what that. it is? It's me just running in the mouth when I do my podcast, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, so you got into writing and, uh, yeah. you, you met Justin through the, the family and the Christmas, uh, movies, which, you know, I was like, I've made jokes and I don't know if you've heard them or not, probably not, but <laughs> I was like, is this what happens when you're forced to do too many family and Christmas movies? Yeah. <laughs> you come out with something like anything for Jackson and then people are appalled and laughing at the same time. <laughs> it, it's funny. I mean, you know, I, I, if we ever, you know, if we get around to doing a, a rom-com horror, then you're, then you'll see all of our like stuff that we've wanted to, right. you know, that's built up inside. But, uh, you know, I wish that were the case. The reality is anything for Jackson is really what, where we wanted to be at the beginning yeah right like okay you know, we it's just in canada there's just no opportunities really so not like had to do used that to many movies. no yeah yeah it's not like it was right but even then it was always that you know uh, they're like you know there aren't that many like toronto offices even you know and agents that they it's just a different it's got its own system up here uh I, I have no problem saying i'm not a fan of it i don't think it's a good system that we have up here um it's uh very much just you know friends of friends getting money and st anyway that's a whole other podcast but the point is uh the you know just i just really wanted to work in film we kept trying to get our movies off the ground you know you get that carrot dangled in front of you yeah you know just do this one for us just do this one but the, the you know the the downside um to doing well at these these family and and rom-com ones is we just kept getting more orders sure um you know, like justin i think i think the one year we there our record i think we did eight uh i think i'd written eight wow. movies and i think justin had directed eight movies in one year um just in this world um which was you know i was very grateful uh sure. that people seemed to like them but uh you know just it's not what i wanted to do um so really i i still say anything for jackson was justin and i's uh first movie because that was the first one where we produced it okay um you know shot it in my house uh i think we shot a section in justin's house um you know so it's it really is you know great we, we house by the way i love it thousand dollars uh so from, that's the from balcony a, up there uh no right here this is uh this is the theater that we're in right now oh, so okay can, okay you know what i'm talking about yeah. though like where you look over uh, yes. from the second floor so. yes that's yeah that's just outside here, okay. so uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was just because we, you know, our budget was so small for the movie, um, so we just wanted to put, you know, everything back on there. Just I didn't take any money for the movie; everything was just, just for the movie, right? We had two hundred and fifty thousand Americans, so we knew we weren't going to have a huge budget. Um, so that meant filming in my house, filming a little bit in Justin's, uh, you know, the flooring. You know, the I don't, I don't know how much spoilers we're going to say, so I'll just say there's, there's one scene where both of us were so specific uh, about the sound um of something ivory that that hits a floor yes and, oh. uh, at the time uh justin lives in a beautiful house but it was uh all carpeted and i was like wow and we're like 
And so he's like, all right, I'll start. So, you know, filming by day and then he's running home and he's ripping up carpet and uh, laying down the flooring there. So, it's, you know, it's just labor love. But, um, you know, it was that was where we always wanted to be. So it was it was really if I'm being honest, it was so nice being validated. You know, that yeah. I was just glad horror fans liked it as a lifelong horror fan. That was uh, that was our biggest concern. Certainly mine um, is our other horror fans going to like this uh you know so it was great and then that sort of set us on a great path we got representation and everything now um so yeah if we get to the the future stuff i can i can talk more about that but yeah it's been it's it was it was a very interesting uh uh ride to get here for sure that's great yeah and i remember it came out late that year so it was like yeah. i was because i'm one of those people that like i do my top 20 regardless of how many people see it or not i'm like very strict i'm like i gotta wait i gotta wait i gotta wait and that one came in. I was awesome. like, "Yes!" I was like, "That's uh, yeah." Fun. I appreciate that. I I saw so many of my favorites. You know, yeah. I think Fangoria had already done theirs. And I was like, "What do you guys like? Give me a chance at least. Like, <laughs> even if I'm not going to make it, I yeah, we'll put it out at the end of January. You know, right? Come <laughs> on, yeah, yeah, exactly. Nobody needs this. Nobody's waiting for this in the November issue. <laughs> Well, it's funny you bring up, uh, you know, and I don't want to get too much into it, but, you know, I, I've oh. heard David Cronenberg talk about the old days where, you know, at the end of the year, you had to get in all these ideas to try to get tax credits and things like that. Right. It's not the same anymore, right? Is, is that what you're saying? Like, it's it, it still kind of is like Canada's film industry, um, you know, based on my experience anyway, it really is just about these tax credits. Right. Right. Yeah, that's like, what it seems we, just, like. we don't we don't have this big, you know. Yeah, the budgets are are nowhere near, so it, it's it's too hard to set up, uh, to to set movies up here. It's just not the same league, so it's it's so hard to go from, you know, having a a call with a studio that wants to, you know, they're talking their low end is like eight to ten million dollars, right? And then you're the and they're like, we might be able to do like a million dollars, but we're you know, and they're gonna watch <laughs> you like a hawk, and you're like, wow, it's just not that's not exciting you know and yeah. nor is that even available yeah. uh because i'm not part of that club uh, and i've never tried to be yeah. um so uh, well that's good yeah. i'm glad that i've got a i've got a quite a few people i've talked to up there there's another movie i think believe it was up there if uh making monsters have you heard of that one? Oh, i haven't but uh oh wait no i think i did it's a yes. really weird uh, mix um, of a movie like the tonal of it it was like funny and also very like, serious kind of similar right, tone this super super crazy question is like they're a wrestler who plays like a big frankenstein guy in it uh don't that might be a different movie it's I'm been a while of. since i've seen it but okay. i don't think All so right. it's got ghosts and like a killer in it and there's a oh prank. okay this might no i'm gonna go check it out though I, uh, yeah I'll, you I'll should definitely out. check it out but yeah they they were kind of mentioned some of the same stuff that you're saying so <laughs> yeah we've got you know there's a lot of really i mean there's incredible filmmakers up here but you know oh, who yeah. knows if if anyone's ever going to hear from them, right? Like, it's, I hope uh, so. That's, uh, yeah, I hope so too. I'm always just trying to tell them, like, no, don't try there. Go to America. Give that a shot. It's, it's based on your product. I'm like, yeah. go try. So now, did you guys? Because obviously, Shutter picked you up to do an original. Did you, uh, you know, shop it around at the festivals and stuff like that beforehand? And it was like, or did they? How did that work? Yeah, it it actually, I know, it definitely appears that way, right? Like that's right. that's how I thought it too because it says shutter original and everything so um uh basically what had happened is we were i think on our i think we had about three or four days left of filming um so we kind of had you know we i'd put together a couple scenes with my background in visual effects uh we wanted to know that our snowblower scene was going to work really well my um, favorite <laughs> so, you know, that, that's that's an advantage on set is we just and i could set it up plan it all out and then uh and then i just took the the drives right there ran upstairs threw them into the computer and like okay yeah here it is this is you know it's rough but this is what it looks like and it's gonna work you know so you can at least we knew it would work that day um uh so those were kind of the advantage so we were sending those kinds of things to uh uh to vortex who is the studio that um that funded the movie um i'll i can remind me and i'll i'll replay that for you okay, uh, how okay. That, but basically um, so they were kind of showing it as far as I understand while we were filming, just kind of show to see if they could get some interest and shutter had said, Hey, let us just buy it outright. You know what I mean? Nice. We, we like, we want it. So let us just have it. Um, so as far as I know, that was the deal that they struck. 
and uh, and that's why it is a a, a Shutter original. I so, gotta admit, like uh, they've really um, and like I'm not associated with them at all, by the way, but they've really done a good job of finding some really good indie like kind of some films. really great ones. Some yeah, of my absolutely. favorite movies that I've seen in the past ten years, yeah. even like it's just like. I'm like, you guys are really nailing. Like, who is picking these movies? And somebody's Seriously. doing something right. Yeah, I I don't know who's doing it now. I know uh, I, I knew one of the guys there, Colin Geddes, who ran a, a big festival. Um, he's got a great eye uh, yeah. for that, and he's always had that knack. So I assume if it's not him, it's somebody equally as impressive. You never see um, that. Though. You're you right. Never see I, it. No, you don't. It's always just the same recycled ones getting shopped, shipped around, right? Place to place. The I can't stand ones. it, but. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, uh, I know I wouldn't have seen uh, Terrified is probably one of my fa- favorite horrors just, that I've seen. I just had last. an interview with the director. Actually, are you uh, kidding? Oh yeah, my I mean, god! Dude, dude, it was like a, a, a I want to talk. To him. Love. He's love so that humble. Movie. So you that's know, awesome. just nice guy. But yeah, that's one of my I favorite films too. Yeah, it's actually, great movie. You know, it's funny. I actually, for the podcast, we did um, anything for Jackson and uh, Terrified as our for for Halloween. Oh, really? Yeah, you, got, you did this all because That's awesome. the, I That's said awesome. those are two of my favorite films in the last, you know, five ten years. So, oh, like, that's so cool. And yeah. uh, I never would have saw what was the other one here. Um, Tigers are not afraid. Yes. right. They, uh, uh, Isa Lopez. Is, that's got to be one of my favorite horrors that I've seen. I've been trying so hard, dude. Ever since I got representation, they're like. Well, who would you let? I'm like, contact Isa Lopez, please, right now. I'm like, Isa, and now she's on True Detective, and I'm like, it's slipping away, guys. Come on, make this meeting happen. Um, <laughs> yeah, that uh, one has but, a little bit of a City of God mixed with, like, the supernatural kind of thing going on. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just absolutely. And and her writing is just, well, um, so, you know, all this is just a big plug for True Detective. I'm really looking forward to <laughs> So, oh, that's a... Uh she's going to be doing that or uh yeah yeah oh. she wrote and directed the whole whole season so the whole yeah it, season uh, yeah the same way that um they had uh jeremy sonia i think did it uh the, the previous first? one. Oh yeah no i think i think the last one i think uh okay. i think the the COVID affected one that's okay. just what i call you know when i say fargo i'm like yeah the COVID affected fargo scene. <laughs> well um well i want to ask you also because you mentioned you know you met uh justin through this whole process of uh writing and everything like that how did you guys meet like was it like you know friends at first sight like did you guys like how did it work uh yeah you know it was actually a friend of a friend um we you know we i think really it was just we had a mutual friend who knew two people who worked in film uh you know in in an hour north of toronto and that's rare so he's like i should just get you guys to meet then i guess um, and so, yeah, you know, it, it was pretty, pretty instant. We both, um, we, we had, um, complimentary skills, you okay. know, Justin is extremely organized. Uh, he shot lists, everything he organizes it and everything. And I'm just, I just know the movie. I'm like, I've got it in my head. I know exactly how it goes. Uh, you know, so I'm like, so it, and it works that way, right? It's, it's good because I'll, I'll do all the, I, I do all the writing and then, but Justin is, you know, obviously he's a very good director. So he's, his job is he's, he's the king of poking holes. Um, so as a writer, you, you should hate it. It doesn't bother me anymore. At the beginning, I hated it uh, because you think you're Teflon and you don't have any mistakes, but you're right. like, yeah, maybe that's a hole. Fine. Whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, so he's, he's very good at those things. So it just worked out really well. Cause I was uh, at the time I was also directing. Uh, when I was at Funny or Die, um, but uh, Justin had already been directing here, and you know I've always had a rule. I'm like I don't really care, just be better than me at it, you know. So and Justin was very good, uh, better than me certainly at the time. So I was happy to you know just take on the the writing and producing side, and we just kind of went at it from there. Honestly, it just uh, after that we just uh, we met another producer, um, and the three of us just got tons of work in that family and um, rom com space. So. Uh, we nice. said, sure, this is better than sitting in a cubicle. Now, did you guys give each other uh, input on anything ever? Like, oh, like for sure. During, like, were you on set, obviously, or, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. so um, for a lot of the movies, that's how Justin and I do it. Um, you know, some of the some of the later, the rom-com stuff, you know, it's it's a bit more factory. Um, sure, so there, you know, There's nothing wrong with it. It's a can of Coke, you know? Hey, and they don't, 
I've never written songs that I haven't told anybody about that are in other that's, stuff. Yeah, that's <laughs> there you go, right? We, you know, it, it's uh, it's it's a great thing to be paid to learn how to do your craft. Yeah, 100%. um, so it's you know, and 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 those those kinds of movies teach you know, family movies taught me well, you better get a great strong opening because kids only got you only got five minutes with kids, so if you don't nail it in those first five minutes, so I never have an unexciting opening. Uh, you know, we never, we only shot J Jackson in 15 days, so we definitely wouldn't have been prepared. Um, you know, if we didn't have the experience of, of all those movies That's beforehand. To make yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was, uh, it was really tight. Like I said, 250,000 American and, and 15 days. Um, so, uh, luckily, you know, I mean, and, and, and you know, it, it was all just a melting pot. Everybody who was involved was so good. Uh, and you had obviously, uh, uh, Julian, and um sheila and everybody just came they, there was not one flubbed line the entire movie not one person needed a second take Man, you know justin it, it, it was they're just incredible right like they're just getting people of that caliber i was, was beyond gonna say because so, like they really seem like they were really just it was just like destined for this role because so this, good yeah. that's some of my favorite julian riching stuff and sheila yeah. was just like uh, she the stepped up like so even good. just like <laughs> yeah. I was just like wow these two are really good together so yeah and the thing that surprised me I mean and Yannick Besson as well you know he came in as a favor uh dude's Murdoch <laughs> mysteries you know like the guy couldn't have been nicer you know and, and that was the other thing too the one thing I I will say and I you know I I've seen I've worked on a lot of sets um in 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 Canada I I I do, you, you haven't seen you don't see much ego. Right. Um, you know, especially people at their caliber and stuff, you, you know, you expect a certain, eh, they might just not want to tie, but you know, just, you know, Yannick could just like, he'd finish his shots and just hang out and just watch, you know, just shoot the shit. Sheila just lay down, just relax, you know, while we're filming. And she's like, oh, if I'm in the way, just tell, you know, it was so, it was very chill. It was very cool. That's awesome. Um, sorry, I don't remember what your original question was. I've gone on oh, like, crazy. Um, just, just pretty much just how you and Justin met, but this is all fine. I like, I like it to work flow. on set. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, yeah. So usually, usually it's that. I mean, you know, look, we, you know, I, I don't, I, I certainly wouldn't try to step on Justin's toes, um, but it's just good. You know, it's just a second pa pair of eyes. We work well together. Um, you know, when we're on set, you know, we, it's kind of, you know, we just, uh, we'll do it. He'll be like, you got any notes? I don't have any ideas. No problem. You know, move on. But the same thing. So we just, we, we work really well together. I would assume um, you know. that there wasn't that many rewrites because, you know, 15 days though, but who knows? Not too many. No, we had to. So that the whole movie happened so fast. Um, so uh, we we'd actually gone in for a pitch on a different movie, uh, another movie that we were shopping around at the time, and they just weren't looking for. Uh, they were looking for something more supernatural, and I was like, "Oh my god, of course, yeah, we got them at home." I'm sorry, like we should have brought those with us. And they're like, "Yeah, no problem." And I was like, "We'll send them as soon as we get back." And so we get in the car. I'm like, "All right, we got to make up some movies right now." <laughs> Uh, so I can write these out as soon as I get home. I love um, that. Started going back and forth, you know, and our, uh, the big thing we, have, you know, Justin and I have a couple rules that we like to throw out. One is, you know, if you take out the horror, is there still a movie there? Right. Like, and that's, that to me, I think is where a lot of movies, uh, horror movies specifically fail, yeah. um, is that they focus too much. Now, some movies are, are based on a gimmick and that's, that's not a bad thing either. Sure. Um, um, but you know, I hope it's an hour and a half. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh uh and uh the other one is well uh, if i've seen it what else can we do right so that was that was sort of the things we were trying in the car on the way home and we got to exorcism and what what i've seen that well wait i haven't seen somebody try to put a ghost into a body you know what i mean i haven't seen a reverse exorcism i was like that could be cool and uh and so we kept talking and kept on and then eventually i'm like okay so the movie opens literally with a locked camera we see them have their thing. And like we, I pitched the opening scene and Justin's like, yes, I get it now. I understand that tone. Let's go. And so it was just that easy. Um, and so I went home. Uh, I think I'd sent the synopsis off to them <laughs> at the time. Uh, and then they put us in touch with somebody else who was going to have a meeting with us. So we had a couple weeks. Uh, so I think I wrote the first draft in, in probably a week and a half or two weeks. Not bad. And and then, yeah, yeah, I've certainly, I've, I've had to do a lot so faster than that, but, uh, some of the one best songs I've written have been in the, like the, the final hours, like, Hey, we got to get this to the right? record label or whatever. It's like, boom, we gotta yeah. get it up. <laughs> exactly. And then it's like our it's two so favorite cool. songs are like, what the hell? We didn't even try that hard. We just, <laughs> <laughs> that was just what we had in the day. Yeah. So you think um, you overthink it sometimes. No, so, 
yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, now myself with with screen, but I I do. I I would have you know obviously would have loved a little bit more time. Um, but there there really weren't very many rewrites. Justin, you know, we we go back and forth a lot, so I can't remember. Obviously, there was probably a lot of a little back and forth here and there, changing things up. Uh, but then we actually we'd had a meeting with uh, Vortex. Um, you know, funny enough, they actually wanted us to do some Christmas movies with them. And so we came in and we said, well, we have this one. Anything for Jackson? It's kind of ready to go. We gave him the quick pitch. Uh, luckily, I think, uh, yeah, Justin had known uh, another great Canadian filmmaker who had um, uh, just worked with Sheila. And so we were like, hey, Sheila, are you at all interested in reading this? You know, we'd love to worry. The blah, you know, I, I, this is who I wrote it for. I did. I wrote it with Sheila in mind. Uh, and I wrote it with Julian in mind. I knew those two were the parts that I, you know, those are just the actors that I was imagining. So very grateful that we got them, but we sent it to Sheila um, and she was so sweet. You know, she was like, yeah, it's perfect timing. I'm, I'm getting on an airplane and she got off the airplane. She's like, I'm in. She's like, absolutely. She's like, let's, let's make this. And so we're like, all right, wicked. So that's cool. We got, you know, Sheila McCarthy, that'll help us. And it certainly did. Uh, we went into Vortex. I pitched the idea real quick. Justin and I went back and forth. Uh, and then five minutes in, they were just like, yeah, that's great. Let's do it. They had an opening. They're like, if you can go in five weeks, if you guys are, you know, five weeks of pre-production. And so we're like, yeah, all right, great. So that was it. And then, yeah, five weeks later, we started filming. So in the basement scenes, is that one of, that's one of your basements, right? Like, uh, so yeah, we're in Ian's basement is actually <laughs> Justin's basement. Um, so that's we have just to get into spoilers, started. by the way, because this is just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you will see a basement of someone named Ian, uh, and you will see a scene where Henry and Audrey wake up. Their bedroom uh, is also Justin's. Uh, I don't know if that's his bedroom or a bedroom in his house. Got it. Um, okay. But, and the rest we filmed here, uh, and we built one location. So Jackson's bedroom is actually was a set that we built. Okay. So now I want to ask you is, you know, is working with uh, Julian Richings and Sheila, like, was there any crazy moments on set or anything funny that stood out that you might want to share with everybody? Or it's something say, unique? Uh, I mean, you know, it was, it's so chaotic. And, uh, <laughs> and honestly, just having to get everything done in those 15 days. Um, you know, the person that surprised me the most is Josh, who plays Ian. Yes. Uh, that guy is he's fucking hilarious man Fantastic. honestly he's one of the funniest people yeah so that was that was a nice surprise so he he'd make everybody laugh all the time um i'm trying to think of any of the crazier troy obviously right you have uh troy james the contortionist yes yeah um, that's right so you know it's funny we, we didn't have anything nothing chaotic like nothing really went crazy wrong um you know uh maybe i can share the, the ending isn't quite what we what we planned that was one um, of the so. things i was going to ask but let's save that one just for the very end Sure, we'll save that for the very end we'll tell you guys um, i'll tell you guys now we're going to get into some spoilers now because i can already feel it it's just, it's a, it's right. that time so if you haven't seen the movie Perfect. shame on you go get shutter and watch it um and yeah or buy the blu-ray because or message me on Twitter and tell me that I'm not worth that five dollar uh, whole month fee. <laughs> it's five bucks for Shutter. Slap him My friends, in the face. I don't have that's what you like, really feel like it, guys. Five dollars. <laughs> I've babysat your kids. I don't know how many times. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, sorry, what were we? At? What would you ask? Any me any funny things that happened on set? Like, what did, did Josh do? Something particularly funny that, or was no, it just I, like, nothing that I'm going to say because. It wasn't all, you know, maybe he wouldn't want me to say. So, so uh, I'll just say that he is hilarious. Um, you know, honestly, it was it was like more for a horror movie, especially it was super a lot of like really sweet moments, mm. you know, like uh, uh, Julian and Sheila really uh, uh, bonded with my kids because obviously we we're filming in our house. So they were around a lot. Yeah, um, uh, uh, they're they're very much like me, though. They all wanted jobs. Um, so that was pretty cool. So they've got, they've got legit credits in there and everything too. My son was a PA, uh, and then, uh, my two other kids did, uh, wardrobe assists. So, um, you know, it was pretty cool. They liked it. They're like, yeah, this is what I want to do. I'm like, well, you didn't really do anything today. <laughs> um, like, so I can see why you'd want to do this all the time. I'm like, but everybody else is working real hard. <laughs> um, uh, as far as crazy, 
You know what? Honestly, I, I can't think of anything that, that would stand out as a, a cool, crazy story. Well, how Everybody about was this? So nice. That's, I think it was a different experience. I mean, it's, that's actually pretty cool, too, right there, just to hear It was that. wonderful, you know? How nurturing they were, yeah. And, and just everybody was like, it was just so nice. Like, uh, uh, you know, um, 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 uh, why am I blanking on the name right now? Um, uh, 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 Murdoch Mystery. I just said oh, Yannick. Yeah. Yannick, Yannick's yeah. daughter was in our movie as well um and she was so wonderful she played jackson's mom um the one who uh uh ends up going down the uh we've said spoilers so the one who <laughs> who goes down her her our elevator there uh which for me was the 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 creepiest out of everything that was my that was the part that freaked me out the most yeah um I love that old touch with the new thing like that was really Dang, cool. yeah that was yeah that was that was just happy accident but uh but when we got to the sound mix, um, he just been working on the sound of, you know, a woman falling down an elevator shaft with a wheelchair. And, you know, it's not a sound, but you can, you got, yeah, exactly. So I walked in and I just heard the, and it's got this beautiful surround sound. So you just hear this clunk, 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 clunk squish. And you're like, oh my God. I was like, it's seven in the morning. I'm like, I'm not ready for this shit. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> um, but uh, so, yeah. So uh, that that ended up being the, the creepiest part for me. Really? Uh, was okay. a sound, yeah, a sound effect of all things. That's a, how important uh, it yes, is. You know? It, it, it beyond. Like, Justin and I both, uh, you know, I hope I hope he wouldn't mind me speaking for him. Both of us were like, like I think we were both like, yeah, it's good. You know, like, we'd finished editing. And we we're like, I think it's good. Like, I think I think it'll be okay. But the first pass that the the sound mix had taken, I was like, oh, shit, this is what a difference. You know what I mean? So any independent filmmaker out there, film on whatever you've got to film on. Save your money for the post uh, audio, because I think that is that's going to take your movie. That's what takes it to the next level, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, one of the uh, scenes that I love in the movie and this we're not going to go in any order here, but uh, is when. Josh's character is downstairs and it's essentially the, Hey, I've got nuggets for you. You know, while he's jamming out to like metal and like, right. Yeah. And like reading the, 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 bi the, the, the like unholy Bible, you know? So it's like, right. <laughs> was that just something that you thought of or. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, I mean, obviously, right. I, I love the idea of, uh, uh, you know, I thought Josh took his character to a really great place and, and, uh, listened to this great, uh screamo metal which was a, a friend of mine's band uh okay uh, called battle scarred uh so i'll give them a quick plug they were okay. very nice uh get to donate a song to us there um for a very fancy i think hundred dollar budget that we could afford uh and then coming in at the 11th hour for us was uh that's actually Janie eastwood's voice um uh, from upstairs so you know you'd know Janie eastwood from like dawn of the dead oh uh, uh, she's, I mean, she's more Canadian royalty, right? Like Janie's was done tons and tons of amazing work. Um, uh, I, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to list off her resume, as well, but she just came on at the, just a friend of a friend. I think she, I was like, I want somebody who's got a great voice for, you know, Ian's mom and Justin and I were so specific. And then I, I don't even remember who they're like, Oh, I'll call Jane Eastwood. She'd probably do it for us. And I'd be like, Oh my God. Yeah. That's, that's way better than like, <laughs> I was just going to try and be a grandma voice. I was like, that's going to suck um so yeah so that was and it, you know it, that, that scene just worked out perfectly it's it, that's i think that was exactly what uh it was certainly what i was picturing um i hope that's what justin was picturing because yeah i liked it a lot now out of curiosity because we know that i mean essentially we know it's it's allu alluded to that his character kills his mom he does yeah he so, definitely does you know obviously but were, was there ever thought to put that scene in or did you go oh that might be a little too much for the the pacing in this or is this something um no and uh i, I can tell you why because he, she was always ian's backup plan um oh, okay. that's why he says you know a mother's a mother like he'd already killed his mother but he was like i just you know he's really going all in so uh and if we were if we'd shown that too early i think it would have given away uh i think it would it would it would it would, it would we wouldn't have the same payoff right um I, you know what i mean i think it's it's you know it, like you say we don't we didn't really hide it right we show him yelling at her and this and that and then we show him show up with this tupperware of blood um but yeah we didn't want to we did we thought maybe if we spelt it out a little bit too much it would it would just spoil the uh the better reveal with Got uh it. with was seen there 
One of the other things I really loved about the film is that it's like you thought about, and, and it's not pointed out, it's just something that I picked up over the times I've watched it, is that each of the characters or the ghosts that appear are individual ghosts for each of those people. Like, they're ghosts of their past of some sort, or something that's happened in their life that might be that they're like, you know, sins or something like that. And uh, I, it seems like it. And I think jo one of Josh's one was the guy that had no eyes. And he, and it, mm -hmm. looked, it looked like he was doing some stuff downstairs. Downstairs. Yeah, I wanted him to be doing so much more stuff downstairs. <laughs> that was the intention. Yeah. Uh, that, one, that one changed a little bit. That was supposed to be like uh, we'd had this guy who was, I think he was like six, 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 seven you know, like 400 pounds. And I was like, yeah, that's what I want. Coming. You know, that's what we want coming after him. Um, but the timing just didn't work out. Now, luckily we got uh, uh, Caleb there and he's great. Um, but, you know, it was just, it was just a, a different look. Sure. Um, but it's why I didn't bring that up. So for this movie, I, I really wanted to um, make sure that I, I was able to, I wanted to try and scare everyone. Um, so what I did was for each of them, uh, I, I did a lot of dream analysis. Okay. Um, so I studied about, you know, what happens in your dreams and what it means and this and that. And then I tried to relate those to the characters. Um, so, you know, we, with spoilers here, um, you know, the flossing ghost is, is all about the teeth falling out. And when you have a nightmare about your teeth falling out, um, it represents a lot of things. It represents either, you know, your, your, you know, your loss of money, uh, this and that, but mostly it's about spinning out of control. You don't have control. And so for Henry, um, that's his whole thing, right? He's like, he, you know, he, he loves his wife enough. This he's going to do this and he's going to maintain control this whole time. Um, and for Audrey, um, she likes to keep her world small, right? She just wants her grandson back. She wants, you know, she can accept it. She just wants this little thing. So when the giant ghost is coming at her, it's just, it's the exact opposite. It's making her uncomfortable. It's about taking her out of that, that safe space that she's built for herself. Obviously the, the haunting memory of her daughter coming back is, is literally the haunting memory of her sure, daughter yeah. coming back. Um, let me think here, you know, and then, uh, yeah, you know, you've got, you've got the Troy ghost and stuff yeah. with the contortions and everything. So really we just wanted to make sure, uh, for me, I, I, it's funny because everybody will say they have a different, uh, favorite ghost. And so I think that usually, you know, to me that says, well, that's probably them. Well, I shouldn't say probably I'm not a doctor. What the fuck do I know? <laughs> uh, I'm hoping it means that's your, your scares, right? Those are your nightmares. Sure. Maybe I've tapped into something there. Uh, or you just went, fuck, I don't know. It's just a goddamn ghost with heat coming out. It's cool, man. Like, yeah, one um, of the other things yeah. that's really shocking is like the, uh, the detective and she, and right. she, I mean, that is some of the funniest, darkest humor is her constantly doing that over and over and over again. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I, it's one well, of those right. things that I couldn't help but laugh, but it, it's like, you know, you shouldn't, but it's like, you can't help it because it's like, oh, wow. But then it gets a little tragic towards the end because. You know, when everything goes yeah. haywire, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's, that's kind of the idea though, right? Like first is shocking. Then you're like, oh shit, how long would that take you to get used to that? You know right. what I mean? Like, you know, and you're like, geez, I don't know. And then, and then how long would it take for you to realize this person's in purgatory and be like, oh man, that's actually sad. Like, it's not scary. It's like, oh Jesus, <laughs> this poor person had nothing to do with this. And now, you know, um, and I mean, part of that too, honestly, I think, I think it's because Lynette is so good um you know her facial expressions her uh and i mean just her acting in general but like when she's doing it you're just you're right there with her the whole time right. um so i think i think that for me anyway um because uh you know we we tried some other things and it just wasn't wasn't working but for whatever reason you know you just get that that magical actor that can that can pull that off and you're like yeah now it works so uh it was crazy so it was intentionally dark humor, though, obviously. And I mean, do you think you get that from like some of the funnier die days mixed in with yeah. just your love of horror or do you just love comedy horror? No, I mean, the one thing we definitely weren't trying to do is make comedy horror. Uh, sure. I add levity to everything. Um, I think it's a I think it's a really underutilized tool uh, in horror. Sure. Right. Because if I can make you go, I get you the close where you, you're like, oh, fuck, the scare's coming. And then I go, boom, here's a good, funny joke. Then you're like, oh, son of a, bam, I can hit you really right. hard right that, right? So you need that, that little moment just to, to disarm them. Uh, so now i got to change it up because obviously I've just said it and I can't use this anymore. So now i got to come <laughs> up with a new way. 
Um, but you know, it's it, their little thing, honestly. And I mean, look, everything. I can't. I don't think. I don't personally enjoy a movie that doesn't have any levity. It doesn't. I'm not looking sure. for a slapstick character. I'm certainly not looking for one lines. Um, you know, or, or even set up and punchline. Um, but I, you know, there's a lot of movies out there that I love that I wish just had a little bit of levity somewhere, you know, just to, just to, just to give me that hope to, to make me go, ah, I gotta be in a certain kind of mood for this movie now, you know? Um, but that's just, that's just personal taste. I mean, yeah, it's, I think it's a perfect balance. I mean, that's one of the things I like about it. And I think it seems like viewers this, these days, like for Mm -hmm. me, it's coming from like, probably we're probably within somewhat of the same age. We've been through some of the same decades at the very least. I'm I was right. born in the seventies and when I think about like going back in the eighties and everything like that and all the stuff that was out there and how the schlockiness of it and I don't know, right. like I feel like I've been bred to enjoy the duality of tones. Whereas yeah. like yeah, the newer crowd is kinda like they just need it one. And it's like sometimes right. that it, it misses those people. And I don't know why, but I I love that. I love having those two two dichotomy like the two yeah separate tones you know it's it's a good point like when i was younger i mean I, obviously yeah i mean you are right i was uh 70s as well so but for me I've, I've always appreciated even if i didn't love the movies i mean i love every movie especially when i was a kid sure. um but you know i could go home and i could watch mannequin <laughs> and then i could also watch sophie's choice and be like wow those are really good movies yeah. you know like those are <laughs> completely different like but the thing i love is like when else in history is that ever going to happen? It's never going to happen again. Yeah. You're never going to be able to go in and say, listen, I got this idea. This guy's name's Jack Burton. He's going to, he's got this buddy, you know, and they're going to go through Chinatown and there's going to be these fucking crazy guys on storms. And there's this guy, David Lopan, and he's going to do all this crazy. <laughs> and then we go under and then there's all this puppetry work and you're going to be like, what? And, and somebody greenlit that, you know? Yeah. And I love it. I love that. It's one of my favorite movies. And I'm so glad it did. And I, I'm upset that we don't get more variety now, you know? It seems um, like so people are right. afraid, you know? They're afraid to, like, push through sometimes, you know? Maybe that's production. I, I get fault, the other but... side financially, right? Like, because, like, you're, you know, it's like, that's a that's a big swing. You know, I think cocaine helped a lot of those decisions. <laughs> Um, so and that's why you know, Maximum Overdrive is a really good movie. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I won't go as far as to say I think it's a good movie, but I will say I watch the opening at least once a year. Yeah, oh, I love that. Yeah, so yeah, at least the first 15 minutes that movie has me every time. <laughs> um, and I loved it as a kid, loved it. Yeah, it's one of those movies that it's like I've, I'm starting to realize that now. It's like the things that I liked when I was younger aren't always the the greatest quality but it's still good to me in entertainment value so <laughs> and you know that i heard it put this way and it, it kind of changed my own personal way of, of thing and it's like well was the movie entertaining right it doesn't have to be good right like i mean i i tell this to everybody i don't know if you've ever seen i don't even want to call it that but uh i've never seen the movie whiplash Okay. Uh, I know. I know. I'm gonna love it. I know it's gonna be great. I just keep trying to. I'm, I'm trying to get myself in that perfect headspace to be like, yeah, this is gonna be the night. So I haven't watched Whiplash, but I have seen. You know, uh, I watch Weird Science at least four times a year. Ah, oh, I love that. So one, it's yeah. like because yeah, or, or my or, science project. Yeah, right. Any of them, honestly, yeah. any of the Night of the Creeps, I'll watch that at any any chance. Return of the Living Dead, any of these movies, I'll watch over and over again um, with just a, a list of great movies stockpiled on me now um, because it's entertainment. I'm totally entertained when I'm watching those movies. Uh, so I don't think movies are good or bad. I just think it's, it's entertaining or it wasn't entertaining. Fair enough. Well, I mean, I know you, you're on a time limit here and I don't want to go over, but I did want to ask you, you know, Please. are you, I mean, obviously you love horror. So there's, there's plans to do something more in the future, whether you get the funding or not is probably the biggest question, but I did see that you are going to be working on a thriller that's going to be coming out here soon. And do you want to talk about that? Can you talk about it or? Um, let me, okay. So, uh, it's the one thing that I will tell you is since I I don't ever really know the term. So since now that I, now that I work in the Hollywood system, we'll we'll call it right. I am with WME now. So, uh, that opened up tons of doors. Uh, I got a great manager who who's the same thing. He's he's known everybody for 30 years. 
Um, so these are, this is, it's been wonderful, truly wonderful. Um, so the difference is in Canada, we make these crazy small budget movies that move really fast. Um, but the biggest difference there is just how much slower things go. So, um, since anything for Jackson, I've sold two original, um, spec scripts, uh, yeah. but they're just, you know, who knows where they're at. I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I, I hear back every now and then, and you, you, you know, we're still attached, uh, to Justin and I are both on as producers on one. Um, and then, uh, I've got another animated feature, uh, that is going through. Um, I don't know how much I can talk about that one. Nice. An uh, animated one. That's cool. That's an animated feature. Yeah. So that one's, that one's really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about that one. That'll be, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, that one I got to let, you know, you get to actively write a lot more comedy, right? You know, they're like, oh, like this has to be funny. And I'm like, yeah, great. Thanks. This is awesome. Funny and scary. So let's do both. Uh, but little kids scary, you know, so <laughs> okay, don't, yeah, don't yeah, expect yeah. the snowboard scene. Um, <laughs> One of my, yeah, uh, we should have mentioned that. Huh? <laughs> uh, and then let's, yeah. And then I've got, um, I got a movie that I'm doing. Um, boy, I don't even know if, what I could think. Uh, I'll say I have, I have like four other movies that are all coming out, but because they're not like either announced or we, or the, some studios just don't announce their movies, right? Like they don't care about that side of business. Um, you know, so me as a lowly writer, I just go, okay, well, I'm just gonna, I'll wait until it's coming out on the weekend. And then I'll say, Hey guys, I didn't know, but it's coming out. You know, did and, you need uh, me to come on set to help? Yeah, uh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, some of them I do. So, you know, yeah. I mean, the ones that Justin and I are, are doing together, we tend to, you know, it's, it's good. You know, people recognize we got a good formula, so there's no reason to change yeah, it up. That's great. Um, so yeah, so Justin has. We've got one that we did together that we're going to both be on set for either. I'm guessing it won't happen this year. Now, early next year. Okay. Um, Justin has another one that I could possibly come on set for that one for him. And then we have two other ones. Uh, oh, I wish we'd done this it was like one more week, buddy. And I could have, I could have spilled some. <laughs> cool stuff for um, well, you'll have yeah, to we tag could, me or tell really me cool and fun. then I'll share it. So there you go. We can do that. We yeah. can do that. And you guys yeah, need to follow wonders. Keith, by the way, on Twitter. <laughs> Or wherever you'd like, actually. That's pretty much it. Honestly, I'm not a big social media guy. I, yeah. I can't handle it. It's, uh, I'll sit there all day if I do. So yeah. I, I, I sadly got rid of them. You're right. Twitter's all I got left. <laughs> well, you're better than me. I have to be on all of them, and it sucks. Yeah, I'm so grateful that I don't need it for work anymore. <laughs> well, I, it's been an honor. I really appreciate you taking the time out. Super pleasure, cool man. to talk That's with fun. you, man. So. I hope to see more. Obviously, we will see more from you in the future. So. Lots more coming. Yes. Yeah. And no me... more family rom-com. That seems to be the thing. Uh, I'm going to clear up. I'll use you, you get to you get to clear this up for us. Uh, we wrote and I'm just I don't know how much swearing you like. We wrote so many of these fucking things oh, yeah. that even after Jackson came out, there was like uh, I there was a backlog of like seven to the point where literally one got came out and, and i was like what the fuck is this i was like why are they attaching our names and he's like we did that movie and i was like no we didn't and he's like yeah we did i had to be reminded of a whole movie that we did um so you know those are just the backlog so it's unfortunate we we're like trying everything i'm like can we just have it not be after then and we moved on it's just this weird thing where it feels like we graduated high school and then just, you know, the, the weird guy circling back around the rom-com for some reason. <laughs> hey, um, man, I've seen a couple of actual <laughs> horror rom-coms lately. That have, yeah, uh, they're, know, they're, they're getting out there. So, you know, Frampton knows? has done a, quite a few, actually, as a matter of fact. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true, actually. I, I, I follow her. She's got, oh, man, such a huge fan, obviously. Yeah. So, so, we've seen everything. <laughs> well, well, guys, please give Keith a follow. Please stay tuned. And Locke, thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I, I look forward to your future stuff, man. So, Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, as soon as I got some stuff I can actually share, I'm going to, I'll hit Let you up. Know. You can just splice it in here. I'll wear, we'll wear something different. It'll be like <laughs> a, uh, a little fun edit for us. <laughs> good Lord. I'm too tired. All right. That's it for me. All right, brother. Have a good one, man. Thanks. All right. You too. Take care.